Hello dear friends, this is Yule Humphreys. I'm so glad to be back with you again today to share with you a word from the Bible. And I want to speak to you today on the importance of perseverance. The importance of staying with it. The importance of keep on keeping on and not to give up. And I find this is an important subject because it's spoken of often in the Bible. And I pray that it will be a message for someone out there that needs to hear this. Someone that's maybe about ready to give up. Someone that's about ready to say, I can't go on any longer. Someone that needs a word in due season. And here's a word from the Lord God uh, through the Bible unto you from His servant. I bring to you a word on the importance of persevering, the importance of staying with it. Over in Psalms uh, 16 in verse Verse 8, it says, I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. And I want to speak unto you on the subject, I shall not be moved. We need to realize that when we're standing for the truth, stay with it. When you're in the right, don't run off to the, to the falsehood. When you're in the truth, stay with it. Don't give up and say, I will not be moved. I won't be stubborn or obstinate, but I will be faithful and I will be committed to the truth. The Bible says that I have set the Lord before me because He is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. And so you see, if you're doing what the Lord wants you to do, if you're doing that which you feel God has set you to do, then stay with it and don't be ashamed because this is the way. In Proverbs it says, over in Proverbs 24th chapter, it says, If a, a righteous man will fall seven times, but he will arise every time. A righteous man will fall seven times, but he gets up every time he falls. You see, the victory is not in never falling, Christian. The victory is getting up every time you fall. And say, Lord, forgive me, I'm going on. I'm going to do better this time. And so keep going, but don't ever give up. Keep getting up, but don't ever give up. And this is important. I recall reading somewhere where Thomas Edison, who invented the electric bulb after hundreds of failures. He said this, he said, don't give up. He says, success in whatever you're trying to do comes when you're willing to try it one more time. <laughs> Keep on willing to try it one more time. Just don't stop. And so it's important that we need to do this. And then another thing I want us to see, and that is the, the fact that we need to be unmovable so that God can use us and we can help others. We can't be changing back and forth. We must be stayed and solid and sound and permanent and convicted and committed and saying this is the right thing. In Psalm 1, uh, uh, 21, the Bible says, I will lift up my eyes into the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord, which made the heavens and the earth. You see, your help comes from the Lord, Christian. And He made the heavens and the earth, so that's the power He has. And with that kind of power, you can know that you are safe in His hands. And with that kind of power, you can know you can stand on the rock, and it won't be moved, and God will bring you through. And then He says, he will not suffer your foot to be moved, because he that keeps you will never slumber. You see, the eyes of the Lord are always upon you. You're trying to do what's right. Keep on going because the Lord is looking, and He's saying to you, Go on, go on, keep climbing, keep climbing, keep climbing. Oh, somebody has said, Perseverance is running up a hill, so don't try to set any speed records. <laughs> I think he's got something there. Don't try to do it overnight, but just stay with it. Stay with it and keep going because God is going with you. And it's important to know that we shall not be moved. And that's a wonderful thing to know. You know, over in the, uh, in the scriptures of uh, 1 Thessalonians, the third chapter, it's an interesting word here. It says, No person should be moved by afflictions, for you should know that you were appointed 
unto afflictions. Now here's a word to Christians. Sometimes we feel like, and I used to feel when I first started preaching years ago, that I never would have any more trouble since I became a Christian. But no, no, that's not right. Many times troubles are the best blessings that you can have. Sometimes the heartache is the best lesson you can learn from. And it's a way that we grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord is through afflictions. And the Bible says, do not be moved by afflictions because you were appointed unto afflictions. The Lord God has appointed you some afflictions. I'm talking to somebody perhaps right now and you're going through a time of heartache. And you just can't understand why you have to face such distress. But I want to tell you, God has allowed it so that you would find in your time of trial and trouble the power of God in your life to move the mountain, to go on and claim the victory and know the way of God is right and never look back but keep going forward. You will learn through afflictions how to stand in the gap and fill up the hedge for your Lord. Don't go back. Don't turn loose. Go on, go on, and keep on going. I like the story told of the, of the minister who went to his bishop and he said, I'm going to give up my church. I cannot keep going. He said, those people harass me all the time. And I just had enough. And the bishop said to him, well, let me ask you a question. Did they, has any of them, any of them ever spit on you? And he said, well, no, not that bad. Has any of them ever whipped you with whips? Well, no, of course not. Has any of them ever put a crown of thorns upon your head? The minister said no. He knew then what he was getting at. And he said, Bishop, those things, they've never done that to me. And until they do, I'm going to stay with them. I'm not going to quit. <laughs> oh, my dear friends, stay where you are. You cannot suffer as much as Jesus suffered for you. Whatever you're going through, it's not as bad as what he went through for you when he went to that cross and died upon that bloody tree and tasted hell for you and me so we could be forever given and made free to walk with God. And so believe and trust the Lord and know that these are Frictions are pointed and they are not nearly as bad as what he went through for you. Never will be. But as bad as they are, as heavy the burden, as dark as the night can be, know this, that it is appointed of God. He allowed it. And there's a purpose in it. So go on and be free. And then another word is in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, and it says this in verse 28, Wherefore we re have received a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace then to serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. We have received a kingdom, my dear friends, that can't be moved. That kingdom is secure. And you're in it if you're a Christian. You're on the rock, Christian. And the rock is not going to fall. Stand still. Know that God is there. Keep going. You're on the right way. You're walking the right road. You've got the truth and the Lord God is with you. And you're in the kingdom of God which cannot be moved. Amen. Stay with it. Stay with it. I like the story told of the uh, mile runner. This actually happened in the, one of the Olympics some years ago. A mile runner from Nairobi was enlisted and they ran the mile and that's where they go around the track several times keep going for a mile and he was about he wasn't uh, near the front he was about in the middle of them and coming around that last curve heading for the home stretch he had a hamstring strike him in his leg and he just fell right on his face on the track and he couldn't hardly get up and they just kept going on of course and they ran on and crossed the tape and he stumbled up, he got up and started hobbling, but he kept going, hobbling, he kept going. The race was over. They had all finished it a few minutes before, but he just kept going, kept going. And his manager ran out on the track to help him. He saw what had happened to him, and, and the runner motioned him back. And he kept going, and kept going. And the people 
all were silent watching him. And he finally got to the finish line, and he crossed the finish line, and then he fell. And they ran, and he ran to him. And everybody stood up and gave him a hand and began to applaud. But it was in the newspaper. The, uh, the reporter asked him, said, why didn't you, you couldn't have won the race, you saw it, there was no way to win. Why didn't you just let somebody help you get Kerr off the track? And the man from Nairobi said, my country sent me to America to run the mile. They didn't necessarily send me to win the race, but they sent me to finish the race. And that was good. The Lord give you grace, my dear friends. You might not win like somebody. You may not come in first place, but stay with it and finish the race that God's given you. Amen?